Hello you guys, this is Kim and bienvenidos to your first half of 2023 reading where we are going to find out what the overall energy and vibe of the first half of the year will be as well as what lessons you will be learning and what main themes the first half of the year is going to focus on. So I will be working with both tarot and oracle cards as well as extra divination tools such as key terms and a homemade deck for your reading. But as always, as I do with all my other general readings, before moving into the divination tools, I will provide you with an intuitively channeled message. Okay, but with that being said, it is time to choose your group. So we have three groups to choose from, each one represented by a different crystal. So starting off for group one, we have the blue calcite. For group two, we have the turquoise stone. And for group three, we have the black obsidian. Okay, so as always, take as much time as you need in order to meditate upon the crystals to see which one calls out to you. You can pause the video if you need more time. And once you have chosen, then you can head on over to the comment section as well as the description box down below where the timestamps are provided for each group so that you can skip right on over to your reading. Okay, but now that you have chosen, let's get right into your messages. Let's go! Hello to those who chose the blue calcite. Bienvenidos to your reading. If you are interested to know how this reading is going to unfold, then I do recommend for you to listen to the intro if you haven't done so already because it is there where I go over everything we are going to cover in this reading. But as always, I will begin by sharing with you what I intuitively picked up on when connecting with the energy of this group, and then I will move right into the cards. So first things first, you guys were called to the blue calcite, which is known to be a very soothing, relaxing, and healing stone. This is a perfect crystal to work with when you are recuperating from something or when you are trying to clear out emotional blockages. Now, I personally associate the blue calcite with the angelic realm. So some of you could be working with or connecting with angels, be it guardian angels or archangels in the first half of 2023. But you having chosen or having been called to the blue calcite feels like your angels or guardian angels way of letting you know, hey, you do have an angel by your side. We are always here with you, protecting you, looking after and over you, as well as your loved ones. One of the interesting messages that came through when connecting with this group was actually the word prayer. So if you guys tend to pray or simply ask for assistance or guidance from spirit, from source, God, angels, ancestors, whoever it may be, know that your prayers are being listened to. And actually, for those of you who have been feeling a nudge to pray or to ask for guidance, support, protection, clarity, whatever it may be, you are being advised to follow that nudge. Because remember, we have free will. So angels, they will not intervene unless given permission to. And normally, permission is given through asking or through prayer. So do not hold back, especially when your heart is longing to connect with source or longing to express itself through honesty, sincerity, through vulnerability. I always keep this in mind when referring to a prayer because it really struck a chord with me. I really resonated with it. And it is a quote from the Anne of Green Gables series re written by L.M. Montgomery. Well, it's more like a passage. Um, and it goes, Why must people kneel down to pray? If I really wanted to pray, I'll tell you what I do. I go out into a great big field all alone or in the deep, deep woods and I look up into the sky, up, up, up into that lovely blue sky that looks as if there was no end to its blueness. And then I just feel a prayer. So you are being advised to pray with intention. And a prayer doesn't even have to be spoken. It could simply be felt, which is why honesty, sincerity and vulnerability was mentioned. Because what you are being asked to do is to connect with your heart space. 
and feel what it is that you need, feel what it is that you desire, feel what it is that you truly feel. You don't have to pretend when it comes to your angels, to your spirit guides, to source, the divine, or whoever it is that you resonate or connect with. You can be real with them. You can be honest and raw. So the first half of 2023, I could say, I could simply say, will be a very healing time for you guys, but that feels a little bit dismissive because the first half of 2023 feels more like you getting deep and personal with yourself. What I'm sensing is someone being afraid of being themselves. And so they hold on to this personality idea or narrative that has nothing to do with them to keep them from revealing who they truly are. And so if that resonates with you, I do feel like what is happening in the first half of 2023 is that you are getting tired of holding on to this false narrative or ideas of who you are. So instead of fighting against the current, you are surrendering to it. You are surrendering to yourself, in other words, and letting yourself reveal to you who you are at the core. So yes, it is a very healing time, but I feel it's more than that. Because what I keep seeing in my mind's eye is someone crying, but not crying out of despair or anguish. It's crying out of relief. The first half of 2023 is your welcoming. It's like this energy of, this is me. I am here. Um, okay, but now I'm going to move into the cards. And this reading is intended to get an overview of the first half of 2023. So in order to do that, I decided to separate the major arcanas or, or arcanas, I never know how to pronounce that word, from the rest of the deck because I felt like the major arcana cards could really provide us with the overarching energy of the first half of 2023. So I'll work with these first and then I will work with the rest of the deck to clarify this overarching energy. And then I'll pull out some oracle cards, okay? So let us see what is the overarching energy whoops, of the first half of 2023. For group one, oh, okay. And we have the wheel of fortune in reverse. Did you see how the card spun around? I found that pretty interesting because this is the wheel. You know, wheels they they spin. Um, okay. But now I'm going to clarify this energy. And we have the Queen of Wands in reverse. And now I'm just going to pull out the rest of the cards to get more info as to what the overall vibe of the first half of 2023 will be. Some lessons you might be learning and so on. We have number 19 with sweating like a sinner in church. And the key phrase is guilt, remorse, nerves, worry, confession, coming clean, apology, and integrity needed. Mm, those are too many cards, so let me put them back in. Shuffle one more time. Too many cards. I'm going to shuffle. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh. So, okay. Three cards keep wanting to fall out, so I'm going to take them. <laughs> um, maybe three is a significant number. You might be seeing the number three a lot or repeated threes or three, three, three. <laughs> like three threes, a lot in the first half of 2023. 
Um, but we have Jellyfish with Let Yourself Be Seen and Transparency. And we also have Pirate Ship with Set Sail on a New Adventure, Explore Beyond the Horizon. And lastly, we have Sandcastle with Everything is Temporary and Divine Timing. And I don't know why, I have just felt like sharing what the card at the back of the deck was. And we have Letter in a Bottle with Your Message Has Been Received. And I feel like this ties back to the intuitively channeled message of Your Prayers Have Been Heard. Or Know That If You Ask, You Shall Receive. Okay? And now I'm just going to pull out a mini chakra card. And these are homemade, by the way. I bet you can tell. <laughs> Um, okay, and we have the solar plexus chakra. And I actually, I want to pull out some key terms as well. So, first half of 2023. And I feel like pulling out one more. Okay, so more than one. And we have listen. We have joy. Patience, recognition, success, and inspiration. Okay, so first things first, I am noticing that I keep wanting to turn this Wheel of Fortune card upright. So that to me indicates that you will be experiencing major shifts and or changes in the first half of 2023. So the first half of the year might start off a little on the downside, maybe. Because what I'm seeing here is that some of you could even be experiencing delays or setbacks. There could be this feeling of things are not going as expected or some things are being prolonged. Some of you might even feel a little bit under the weather at the start of 2023. Maybe you're not feeling as motivated or you find yourself feeling a bit irritable or a bit down. I am picking up on a bit of frustration with the Wheel of Fortune in reverse. And then with the Queen of Wands being in reverse as well, um, some of you might not feel as inspired to work on the things that normally bring you joy. You might not feel as energized at the beginning of the year. But as I said, I did feel, and I still do feel, this need to turn this Wheel of Fortune upright. So this energy that you are experiencing at the beginning of the year isn't going to last throughout the entire year or even throughout the entire first half of 2023. With the card sweating like a sinner in church, I do feel like the reason why this year is starting off this way, which might feel a bit heavy to some a bit frustrating as well is because you are clearing out some things which I feel is the reason why you were also called to the blue calcite when the queen of wands is upright she is in her power she is assertive she is confident she's taking charge and I apologize for using the pronoun she because this has nothing to do with gender or sex <laughs> the queen of wands is simply describing a very empowered feminine energy and we all have both feminine and masculine within us regardless of gender or sex yet this queen showing up in reverse lets me know that what you are experiencing right now is to help you clear out anything that is keeping you from being this queen of wands upright and i feel like that is further confirmed to me with the solar plexus chakra showing up for your spread because this energy center deals with our confidence and with our sense of self. The solar plexus chakra also represents masculine energy. So when this energy center is open, clear, and balanced, it can manifest as someone being assertive in their power, feeling empowered. So with recognition being here, and with this sweating like a sinner in church card, I do feel like at the beginning of the year, you are being called to recognize all that has been bothering you. Because I feel like a lot of you have become accustomed to suppressing your emotions, your needs, or more specifically, suppressing your frustration, your anger, your disappointment, and so on. Yeah, because of what I'm mostly picking up on from this group is frustration, 
and anger. And so I feel like those are emotions that have been building up because they haven't been expressed in some healthy way. And so the first half of 2023 is really asking you to clear out all of this energy. Because when we suppress anger, that builds up into resentment. And that is an even heavier emotion to carry. So there is this emotional purging going on in the first half of 2023. And it might feel rough for some because what I'm seeing with the Wheel of Fortune is that in order to clear out this heavy energy, you are being presented with experiences in which you cannot suppress what you truly feel any longer. So that's what I'm seeing for you guys. The Wheel of Fortune, when it is upright, it has this feeling of destiny or fate. And so it being in reverse, it's almost like you are fighting against the universe or you are fighting against some divine plan. Yeah, because then we do have divine timing with the Sandcastle cards. It's like if there are delays, if there are setbacks, if things don't work exactly how you expected them to, do not resist this because I feel like this is divine intervention happening for you. And I feel like the more you resist this or the more that you fight against it, the more delays or setbacks will keep on occurring. Yeah, because what I was sensing at the beginning was this feeling of going with the flow. The first half of 2023 is really asking you to go with the flow. So I feel like the first half of 2023 might begin a little rough, and it's because you are getting aligned with what is for you. This to me feels like a transition that you're going through. And transitions aren't always smooth, especially if there are some things that we need to release, especially if there are some things that we're still holding on to that we need to let go of, or if there is some resistance. Yeah, I feel like the first half of 2023 is really calling you to look at the bigger picture. And if you can't see the bigger picture, know that it is okay. And this message just came out of nowhere. Just don't feel like you need to fix everything. Um, because with the Queen of Wands in reverse, I am getting this sense of like someone feeling responsible for a lot of things or feeling this great sense of responsibility, not only for self, but also for others and as well as for external circumstances, especially things that are out of their control. So the first half of 2023 is really going to help you realize or come to understand what is in your control, what is in your power, and what isn't. And to focus more on that which is in your power. Because I feel like a lot of you exert a lot of your energy and time into things that you cannot control whatsoever. And I feel that's even more disempowering. Because trying to control something that is out of our control makes one feel like we are powerless or like we are useless in a way. When in reality, it's not that you're powerless or useless. It's just that this is not meant to be your responsibility. It's meant to be the responsibility of someone else or of the divine or of timing, of time. So the first half of the year might start off feeling a bit wonky, but I do see you finding stability as the year progresses. Um, some of you might actually be going through a transition because with everything is temporary temporary some of you might be experiencing an ending and that might feel a bit ungrounding for some because you are stepping into new territory and so you're getting familiarized with this new energy new environment new people or new chapter of your life and so that might take some time um so again with the queen of wands being in reverse don't rush into things or don't feel like you need to rush into things or make progress quickly go with the flow find your natural pace and move at that pace with the keyword worry some of you could be worrying about how things are going to unfold or what the future holds and because we do have joy and success i do feel called to reassure you that everything is going to be all right i'm not just saying this just because i do feel like spirit really wants to reassure you that things are going to turn out all right for you um just you know complete honesty here it might just be the timing the timing where you and spirit or universe are not aligning because you might want for things to move 
along quicker or you're expecting a certain timing for things and universe has a different plan. So I do feel called to say release expectations when it comes to timing and just know that everything is going to happen or come in or unfold or manifest in perfect timing and i know i know that might not be a very reassuring message but man i have experienced this myself universe just has crazy crazy ways of making things align and work out for us And we might not see how everything is playing out or how the pieces are coming together until it happens. And the outcome is way better than we expected, you know, because universe knows who is out there. Universe knows what opportunities are are out there that we might not see at this moment. And so it, it might take some time to make everything Align. So if we were to rush into things or impulsively do things, especially when we don't feel that it's the right thing for us, we might say yes to something that is not as good as what the universe had in store for us. So just to give an example, let's say if you are looking for a house, right? And universe has this perfect house for you that checks all of the boxes for what you want in a house. But it hasn't been put up for sale yet it will be put up for sale in six months but you don't know that because you don't know that there's no way for you to know that but universe does universe might guide you in some way to wait you know maybe by you not getting the best offers or every house that you're settling for someone else ends up buying it and so on Like they keep you on your toes enough for you to reach that six month period where that perfect house for you is finally available. And then you can come up in alignment with it. That's the vibe I'm getting for you guys. So there is this message of trust, you know, trust in the divine, trust in divine timing and trust in your own instincts, which is why I keep mentioning to not be impulsive in the first half of 2023. You know, don't let your ego get the best of you. Our ego is not a villain. You know, our ego is there for a reason. I don't think we are meant to kill our ego. Yet when the ego is predominantly the one steering the wheel, It can lead to hasty decision making or recklessness or making decisions out of pride, out of arrogance, out of wanting to prove something or even out of fear. So it's important to keep your, I wouldn't say keep your ego in check, but just be mindful of when you are being ego driven and when you are actually listening to your instincts and your intuition. And I feel like that's why we have these three key terms, listen, patience, and recognition. Recognizing when it's your ego, your impulsivity, or your fear coming through, and when it's your intuition. And that's why we have patience, right? Because in order to have that discernment, we need to be patient with ourselves, you know, not be impulsive, not jump into assumptions. And then we also have listen. So pay attention, pay attention to yourself, to how you're feeling and listen to your intuition. And I feel like that's why the first half of 2023 is really calling you to not suppress your emotions. Because sometimes when we suppress feelings of frustration, anger, disappointment, that can cloud our intuition or it can drive us to make decisions out of anger, out of frustration. So I feel like with patience and listen, it's about allowing yourself to feel through your honest and raw emotions, those primary emotions, so that then you can make a clear-headed or level-headed decision. With set sail on a new adventure, explore beyond the horizon, I definitely feel with the Queen of Wands showing up here that you might feel sometime in the first half of 2023, maybe more towards the second half of the year. This creative spark or this, I was going to say impulse, this nudge to explore, to try new things. The message go your separate ways came to mind. So some of you might be, if you're living with others or if you're living with your family, you might decide to move out or you may possibly even relocate. With the Queen of Wands here, there is this feeling of craving or wanting independence, craving or wanting freedom. For some, this could be something like 
working somewhere else or trying a new job or if you work a nine to five becoming self-employed or starting something of your own but there there is this craving for something more for something new some of you might even feel more adventurous and because queen of wands is associated with the element of fire fire makes me think of sagittarius sagittarius being all about travel some of you might even want to travel and it could be short distance or it could be long distance travel or it could be something like planning start looking into where you want to travel to um, what you want to see and so on the other thing i'm getting with pirate ship it's reminding me of the three of wands in tarot is planning for the future. Uh, for those of you who are into manifesting or the law of attraction, you might um, start, if you don't already, you might get into like vision boards or is it scribing um, or listing down what it is that you want to call in. There's this hunger or this ambition that you will be feeling sometime in the first half of 2023. Like if you aren't feeling very ambitious right now or if you don't have an idea as to what you want to do, where you're heading and so on, I feel like you will be pretty surprised sometime in the first half of 2023 by what you're truly passionate about because it almost feels like you don't know what you're passionate about and then it's sometime in the first half of 2023 oh there's this little ant here <laughs> um you're surprised by this sudden burst of passion for something it's like it was hidden in you it was in you all along but it just needed to come up or come through and then it comes through for you unexpectedly in the first half of 2023 and i feel like that's when this wheel of fortune is turning upright that's when things start feeling like okay we are aligning or coming more and more into alignment maybe this is the point in which you yourself will feel like you are on the right path and it's not that you haven't been on the right path because you are always on your path but maybe for you up until this point it felt like you were off course or like you really didn't know where you were headed and then sometime in the first half of 2023 you get the sense of direction or you feel like you are getting hold of this inner compass really getting connected with it yeah and for some your inner compass might be guiding you towards a new location towards a new place um traveling to a foreign country um, and then we have jellyfish with let yourself be seen and transparency. Yeah, we were talking about you, you know, being transparent in regards to your emotions. There is a healthy way always to express our emotions. Um, and I feel like the first half of 2023 is you learning what this healthy way of expressing what you truly feel is. It's about you allowing yourself to be transparent. And it's also being confident in your decision making. I feel like as you begin to trust yourself more and more and as you practice discernment, as you practice patience and listening, you become more and more confident in your decision making, which then allows you to feel more confident in expressing yourself. Yeah, because with let yourself be seen, the queen of wands, when she is upright, she's all about being seen. She's all about stepping into a room and all eyes are on her. So the first half of 2023 is really working with you to help you getting comfortable with being seen. There's a lot of rawness coming through for this group. And I will be honest, some of this self-expression that you will be practicing in the first half of 2023 might not be the prettiest in the sense that you could be expressing some emotions or some feelings or sentiments that are quite heavy or that are not very comfortable for the one expressing them and for those witnessing it and it's uncomfortable because these are emotions that I feel society has repeatedly condemned or has seen as bad. And it's emotions such as anger or even sadness. Since it's not normalized, you know, a lot of people are uncomfortable with crying or seeing others cry. So yeah, some of you might be crying. What The phrase that came to mind was ugly crying. And it's not necessarily because something negative or bad is happening. I feel it's more like an emotional release. It, it might even happen that you are laughing and then you end up crying, right? Because laughing is, an, is another way that we express 
or even purge emotion so you might start off laughing and then that naturally leads to crying and it's not because something bad is happening it's just that your body is like responding this way yeah so if you feel a need to cry or if you feel a need to vent please don't suppress this need because this first half of the year is really calling you to be transparent to release i actually want to read the guidebook message that is associated with this card okay here we have it. So we have jellyfish, let yourself be seen, transparency. The jellyfish wants you to practice transparency and authenticity. It's time that you let others see you for who you truly are. Take off the mask, shed any expectations, and embrace yourself unapologetically. Authenticity is perhaps one of the bravest practices of all. You expose yourself to possible judgment, ridicule, and disapproval. Although the journey towards authenticity can be uncomfortable at times, keep in mind that the benefits far outweigh the risks. When living authentically, you raise your vibration, align to your soul's purpose, and attract new waves of spiritual abundance. Be genuine. Be you. Yeah, this first half of 2023 is all about allowing yourself to be yourself, which was the message that came through right at the beginnings before we even pulled out any cards um i with the key term where is it inspiration and then the queen of wands showing up here for those of you who are creatives or creators i do feel like the first half of 2023 is also encouraging you to create authentically in other words allow your true self to come through your creations because i feel like and I feel like I have given this message before in a previous general reading that if you feel unmotivated by what it is that you do, it could be because either A, you are not doing something that you truly resonate with or B, how you are approaching this is not in an authentic way. So to give an example, let's say you are a singer or a musician or a performer right? Because we do have the Queen of Wands. She's very artsy. I always see her as a performer and artist. Um, but lately, you haven't been as excited to work on your music or as excited to perform. And it's not because you're not meant to be a musician or a performer, but it could be because the way that you are approaching music or the way that you are choosing to perform is in a way that is not authentic to you. So you might be working on music that you think is popular or that others will like, but it's not the music that you would like to produce. Or you are performing in a way that you think might be socially acceptable or that might bring you fame or recognition, but it's not in a way that you truly Truly resonate with. So the first half of 2023 is really going to reveal all this to you. It's going to help you see whether what you are doing is a true authentic expression of who you are or, or what you want to express. And if not, I do see um, changes happening. I feel like universe, I feel like universe or your higher self isn't going to allow for you to play small or isn't going to allow for you to hide who you are any longer because they see how damaging it is to you and it has been to you. Um, they really want for you to feel empowered by who you are and see how your uniqueness is of true value and importance and, and how it can bring you more recognition, success, and abundance than if you were to follow in somebody else's footsteps. So this is about you paving your own path discovering who you are or maybe not even discovering but just allowing yourself to be who you are now with the key term inspiration it goes back to that message of feeling adventurous wanting to try something new because with the queen of wands being here this is all about creative energy so i see you tapping more into your creative energy feeling more inspired sometime in the first half of 2023 as well as finding a new form of inspiration yeah, because I feel as you allow yourself to be more and more honest with yourself, you will feel more comfortable with pursuing that which you truly align with. I feel like a lot of the things that you guys pursued or were into or liked were things that you were pursuing because it was normal or because it was popular or because it was what was expected of you maybe not of you personally but of like your generation or your age group or your culture possibly 
and not um, so much because you actually liked it or enjoyed it or it aligned with you. So yeah, you might start liking new things or simply being more honest about what you truly do enjoy and what you don't enjoy at all. Yeah, because the vibe I get from the Queen of Wands is of being forthcoming, honest and blunt, not caring what other people think or what they're going to say. Now, the Wheel of Fortune is associated with the planet Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion and growth. So I do see you guys growing a lot in the first half of 2023. I do feel like you guys are leveling up in terms to emotional maturity. And I also feel that your ambition will be expanding or growing. It almost feels like you guys are opening yourself up to the world or you're allowing your world to expand <laughs> that's the vibe i'm getting i'm being reminded of the song that comes out in the disney movie Tar tarzan strangers like me the lines i just know there's something bigger out there i can see there's so much to learn i want to know can you show me that's the vibe i'm getting for the first half of 2023 and the energy i see you coming more and more into yeah, so some of you could even be making new acquaintances or there could be this longing to meet new people and people who are, oh, strangers to you. Maybe that's why the song Strangers Like Me came up. It's like people that you wouldn't normally associate with or people that are kind of out of your comfort zone. Or it's, maybe it's simply about meeting people who you longed to associate with, but for whatever reason, you didn't yeah so the first half of 2023 is about you doing you you doing the things that truly call out to you that align with you heart and soul and are also mentally stimulating for you and with integrity needed i do feel like you guys you guys are craving authentic relationships or are craving to connect with people who have integrity or who value integrity yeah, this could also be pertaining to what you do. Maybe you are wanting to align with the work that has integrity or you want to start working in a way that is honest or being honest in your work. Yeah, um, the sunflowers in the Queen of Wands card is really standing out to me. So sunflowers might be of significance. I associate them with the sun um, as well as optimism. And aligning with that which uplifts you and empowers you. And then the black kitty here uh, is reminding me of protection. So just know that you are being divinely protected and looked after by your guides, by spirit, by angels. Especially angels. I do feel like there is a strong angelic presence for this group. Um, I do want to point out that we have the number 10 repeated twice in this spread. The Wheel of Fortune is the 10th card um, or the 10th major arcana. And then if we reduce the number 19, we have the number 10. Um, 10 is a number that I personally associate it with ending and completion. So I do feel like you guys are ending a cycle in your life. But most importantly, I feel like you guys are preparing for a new cycle or a new beginning. And so the Wheel of Fortune in reverse could simply be representing that in the first half of 2023, you are wrapping up this old cycle. Yeah, so things might surface up, things that maybe you left unfinished. Um, and if they do, it's because once again, you are wrapping things up. So um, it's best if you don't leave things unfinished in the first half of 2023. Like if things surface up, tend to them if you can, if you have the energy or the time to do so, because that would really, really help with you not having more to deal with in this new phase, chapter, or cycle of your life. But if there are certain things that need to carry over, then allow for them to carry over because it's best when we do not force things. Because when we force things, it creates more delays, it creates more stress, it just creates more unnecessary struggle. So go with the flow, um, do what feels right to you, and allow for transparency this first half of the year. The last thing I do want to say with the Queen of Wands in reverse, again, this is a general reading, so take it how it resonates. If the shoe doesn't fit, don't force it to fit. But what I'm seeing with the Queen of Wands in reverse is some of you could have been expressing arrogance in your past or could have been 
allowing for the ego to be at the forefront. If so, I feel like the first half of 2023 is going to be very humbling. Um, but most importantly, what I'm seeing is that one of the lessons you will be learning is the difference between being confident and assertive versus being arrogant and defensive. Because, okay, what I'm getting with the Queen of Wands in reverse is like a wounded ego. And because we do have the solar plexus chakra being here, this could even be a manifestation of a wounded masculine. And so I do see this realization in the first half of 2023 of how your wounded masculine might have dominated most of the time or might have been what drove you to take certain actions or make certain decisions. And then I see you choosing whether you want to continue on this path of standing in your wounded masculine or whether you want to turn things around you know heal oh and i just noticed that this key term <laughs> fell out as well but it was hidden under the camera and its project um so some of you could be working on a new project um in the first half of 2023 or or if you have been working on a project you might be concluding it or wrapping it up it's more like wrapping it up in the first half of 2023 um, and I do feel like this project will be successful. And it doesn't have to be a work project or a creative project. It could even be a self project, you know, like working on your patience, <laughs> on being more honest, being more transparent, um, and so on. Those are all the messages I am seeing with these cards. So to wrap up the reading, I'm just going to pull out some final oracle cards to get any last messages, advice, and or guidance from spirit. Okay, so let's see. So we have good things are happening to you too. Remember this and know there is plenty for everyone. Yeah, some of you might tend to compare yourself to others or maybe lately you have been experiencing a lot of jealousy or even envy. Um, if so, please don't shame yourself for that. Well, I can't speak for everyone, but I think I can say that feeling envy and jealousy is quite common. It's just that it's not spoken of as much, <laughs> yet it is a very human emotion. So if you are experiencing or have experienced those emotions, know that you can heal through them, know that they are impermanent, and they are simply an indicator that you see something in others that you know you have within. It's just that you haven't recognized it within yourself, and that's the frustrating aspect of it. Um, so, and then we do have the key to recognition. So I do see you recognizing that which you long for and yearn for, and maybe even envy in others within yourself or in your life. Okay, yeah, the first half of 2023 is about you recognizing your individuality, your talents, your skills, your uniqueness, your magnificence, because you are a magnificent being, okay? And we also have the changes you are experiencing are really good. Happy outcomes are on the way, revel in this thought. And we also have try to see only love in any situation, person, and in yourself. Love wins. Okay, so oh, it's interesting. We have like this heart here and then we have this heart-shaped carving. It's like a key and a locket. Yeah, so the pieces of the puzzle are going to start fitting with each other the bigger picture is going to become more and more clear to you yeah and what i'm getting from this image is seeing through the eyes of love having a more positive outlook on things and i do want to share the card at the back of the deck so we have if you find yourself forcing or efforting take a break everything feels effortless after alignment of your energy okay so those are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. If you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. 
I do offer personal readings, all the information is on my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching until the very end and thanks to all of you who took a moment to watch the advertisements um, since that is one way to support me and to support this channel. So if you did, I truly do appreciate it. But that is all for now. Wishing you a wonderful first half of 2023 and until the next moment, bye bye. Hello you guys who chose group 2, the Turquoise Stone, bienvenidos to your reading where we are going to get information about the first half of 2023, find out what the overall energy and or vibe of the first half of the year will be, what lessons you will be learning as well as the main themes this first half of the year is going to focus on. And I will be working with both tarot and oracle cards as well as key terms for this reading. But before we get into these divination tools, I would like to share with you what I intuitively picked up on when connecting with the energy of this group. So a song did come to mind when I was connecting with the energy of your group. And that song is Little Do You Know by Alex and Sierra. So if that is a song that calls out to you, if you would like to listen to it after this reading or read the lyrics, then please do so because there might be a message there for you. But if you have been listening to this song lately or if you have been hearing it, a lot when you're out and about then this could be serving as a confirmation that you chose the right group but a song coming through for you guys right from the get-go could be an indicator that your guides higher self spirits source your angels even ancestors could be connecting and or communicating with you through music so to pay attention to the music that you listen to or find yourself randomly singing because they might hold a message for you. Also because you guys chose the turquoise stone, I am being called to mention the throat chakra, which is the energy center that has to do with communication, speaking your truth, honesty, authenticity. So you could be activating, healing, and or opening your throat chakra for some, your field of work, profession, or even a hobby might require for you to make use of your voice a lot, or it might have to do with communication in any form, so even in writing. So if that's the case, I feel like your throat chakra is going to be very, very active in the first half of 2023. And I don't know why, I just feel called to mention to be gentle with this energy center or just with your throat. Um, be mindful of it. Take well care of it. You know, don't strain it too much. It could be your vocal cords or it could be something like don't force yourself to say something that you don't mean. Don't force your communication. Be open. Be fluid. Be honest with your communication. Some of you might have trouble expressing yourself or expressing your truth. And in the first half of 2023, I see, I see you working on that. Um, being comfortable with speaking up or simply sharing your opinion or sharing your voice. Yeah, I feel like a lot of you guys have a very unique perspective. Your opinions might differ from the norm. And because of that, there might be a hesitation to be open about what you truly think because of uh, a fear of it not be taken well or it being misunderstood or you being judged. Um, yeah, and now I'm being pulled to the solar plexus chakra, which is the energy center that has to do with confidence, um, self-assurance. So I do feel like the first half of 2023, you're going to work on being more comfortable and especially feeling more safe with expressing your beliefs or your opinions or your ideas or perspectives. Yeah, I'm, I'm sensing resistance, so it might be a little difficult at first, but I feel like as you start doing it more and more, it's going to become more and more easy. And you know, this resistance that I'm picking up on might also be from others. Like if you do choose to express what you believe in, you might um, experience some opposition or it could be something like getting into healthy debates <laughs> with others. Yeah, and the other thing I'm getting with the turquoise stone is that I do feel like you will be finding members of your soul tribe or your tribe um, in the first half of 2023. Yeah, I see you coming more and more into alignment with members of your soul family or with kindred spirits. Um, and I feel like this is a result of you 
speaking your truth and sharing your voice because it's almost like it is through sharing your voice that your soul family members or your soul tribe members can find you and recognize you. It's almost like a call that you're sending out and they recognize it and come towards it. <laughs> yeah, so these members of your soul family that you're coming into alignment with are, are also people who have learned to speak their truth and to show up authentically. Yeah, because I feel like you guys, every soul is unique, but I feel like you guys are, you see the world through a different lens. <laughs> you have your own special take on things that is not often seen or heard of. And it could be because it's rare, but it also could be because, you know, other people might think the way that you do, but they could be afraid to express it, you know, because it's not conventionally acceptable. Yeah, I feel like you guys have what a lot of what society calls unpopular opinions. But I do feel like you will be meeting people who will be open to what you have to say. Um, they might not share your same, same opinions, but at the very least, they will be respectful of yours. Um, and you could also be meeting people who share the same opinions as you. So and There's half and half there. Yeah, I don't know. The word tribe keeps coming to mind. I feel like you guys will be meeting members of your tribe. Um, I feel like this turquoise stone is representing someone. Someone in your life who is very protective of you and who will be protecting you in the first half of 2023. Yeah, this feels like an ally. This feels like a best friend. This feels like your support system. Someone who is very supportive of you. Someone who has your back is always on your side. This could be someone who is older than you or they just... Or just give up this energy of being older, wiser, mature. But the turquoise stone is known as a stone of protection and healing as well as a stone of wisdom. And one that can assist with connecting with the spiritual or with spirit. Um, so some of you could be exploring more of your spiritual side in the first half of 2023. Or exploring new spiritual paths. Yeah, what I'm getting with the turquoise because it does remind me of ancestors is that some of you could be learning more about your ancestors and their spiritual practice or traditions customs and you could feel inspired to practice them yourselves or implement them into your own practice in some way um, or simply just learn more about it yeah i do want to say that there is some information or knowledge that you guys are tapping into it, to, it, it feels like you are digging up something digging up something from the past like i said it could be an old custom an old practice maybe that has been forgotten or isn't known of that much and then you start learning more about it getting more acquainted with it or maybe even skilled at it and then later on you decide to teach others about it um or share it with others and i feel like this is very important to you what you want to accomplish or what you as a soul agreed to do in this lifetime it's not like your sole purpose it's like one of the things that you agreed to pursue or to do or to share or teach in this lifetime um yeah Okay, <laughs> but now I'm going to move into the cards. And so I will start off by pulling out some tarot cards. And I decided to separate the major arcana cards from the rest of the deck because I felt like these major arcana cards could really give us the overarching energy of the first half of 2023. Um, so I will be working with these first and then I will work with the rest of the deck to clarify this overarching energy. Okay, so let's see. Well, wow, that was fast. So we have Justice, which is the 11th major arcana of the deck. And to clarify this energy, we have... <laughs> this card just flew out. We have the Ten of Cups. So cool. And we also have the Knight of Wands. 
Okay, so now I'm just going to pull out the rest of the cards, which will be Oracle cards, to get the overall vibe of the first half of the year, as well as the main themes and so on. So we have the number 36 with hotter than blue blazes and the key phrases passion, sensuality, amorousness, chemistry, longing, and instant crush. Ooh. And we also have card please. We have whale mm, with your voice matters and speak your truth. Okay, the funny thing about this is when I was talking about how it was important for you to speak your truth because it was like you sending out a call to your soul tribe members so that they could find you and come towards you. I was going to say it was sort of like emitting a whale call. <laughs> I don't know why, but the image of a whale appeared in my mind's eye very, very clearly. Um, oh, and the other thing that I didn't share with you guys, um, when connecting with the energy of your group, this might be a weird way to put it, but I felt the presence of the ocean or the sea. And I sort of visualized myself standing on a seashore. So... The sea or the ocean might be of significance for some of you guys. Maybe you live by the sea or the ocean or you will be spending a lot of time at sea or near the ocean. Um, or maybe the sea, the ocean is very healing for you. Um, it could also be the case that the whale is a spirit animal of yours. But yeah, I just found that interesting because it came to mind. But for whatever reason, I didn't say it. I didn't share it with you guys. You see, it's all about communication the first half of 2023. Sharing what you feel, sharing what comes to mind, because it could end up being of great importance. Maybe not only for you, but for somebody else. Um, I do, and with the turquoise being here, and then justice being the overarching energy, I do feel like you guys have a lot of wisdom, insight, knowledge to share with others, or insight that can really help others um so you keeping quiet is not only doing a disservice to you but it's also depriving the world of some good info or good stuff um okay but i'm gonna pull out the rest of the divination um tools so we have homemade mini chakra cards so i'm going to pull out one of these and i will say i'm feeling very distracted um, for this group's reading, in this group's reading, um, maybe because there was a lot of noise going on, but some of you could be feeling distracted in the first half of 2023, um, but we do have the third eye chakra, and now I just want to pull out some key terms. Uh, we have reflect, we have patience, and I just want to pull out some more. Okay, I'm going to pull out one more. Okay, so we have tower, offer, union, practice, and we also have decision. I am feeling very, very spacey and very distracted. Um, some of you might tend to be up in your head a lot. You could tend to overanalyze or over overthink things a lot. Or if you do have trouble expressing your truth or speaking up um, or sharing your voice, you can tend to like stay in your mind, be up in your head a lot. So... You know, instead of speaking something out loud, you might just say it in your head. <laughs> or instead of having conversations, you might just play them out in your head. Um, yeah, because I find myself just thinking about what I'm going to say, but not saying anything. <laughs> and I feel like that's why I'm getting very, very distracted. 
And I tend to do this a lot because I, I can be very shy and even insecure at times. So instead of just saying it, I tend to just think it and then overthink it and then not say anything at all. So yeah, with the whale, with your voice matters and speak your truth, I feel like first half of 2023 is really calling you to speak up and share your voice and communicate with others. Um, so what I'm being called to do right now is share the guidebook message that is associated with this well card. And once I have done that, I will start getting into interpreting the rest of the cards. Okay, so we have whale. Your voice matters. Speak your truth with the message. Whales communicate with each other using high frequency songs, clicks, and whistles. In fact, the frequencies produced by whales can travel up to 10,000 miles in the ocean. For this reason, the whale wants you to consider how you use your voice. Do you communicate clearly and honestly? Do you feel confident speaking your truth? Do you use your voice to guide other people? Are you communicating from a place of love and compassion? Take a moment to think about how it feels listening to an influential speech, a meaningful song, or even sitting in a room full of people praying or chanting. It's not the words themselves that are powerful. It is the vibration and intention behind them. Your voice is powerful beyond belief. Use it wisely. The whale is also associated with the psychic gift of clear audience or clear hearing. And we do have the numbers 1, 10, and 1, 11. I'm pointing these numbers out in case they are of significance. Yeah, okay. I did mention how music might be of significance for you guys because it could be how your spirit guides, your higher self communicates with you. Um, so I feel like this whale message further validates or confirms that. Also, some of you could be clairaudient as the guidebook message mentioned, which means that you could receive messages through clear hearing. Um, you could hear a message in your mind oh maybe that's why I was getting a little bit spacey because I was receiving messages in my mind I was hearing them in my mind so your intuition your higher self or your guides might communicate with you in this way speaking directly to you in your mind or some of you might even hear messages like hear them with your physical ears also I feel it's important to pay close attention to the conversations that words or messages that you overhear um, or really stand out to you because they could also be messages coming from spirit or your higher self. Yeah, and with the third eye chakra being here, I do feel like a lot of you guys are tapping into new psychic abilities. One of them might be clairaudience or already existing psychic abilities of yours are heightening in the first half of 2023. I also feel like you guys have the ability of claircognizance where you just know stuff. Some of you might even experience something like you're speaking with someone and then all of a sudden you say the right thing or you say something that you didn't even know you knew. Like for example, you might say personal information of the other person that they never shared with you and it just came out. Like you didn't even think about it. It didn't even cross your mind. It just came out of you. And that could also be something like you channeling information or guidance. Yeah, but with justice being the overarching energy, this card speaks about honor, integrity, honesty, truth, the law, equality, disputes, as well as consequences, and of course, justice. So as mentioned previously, some of you might work in a field that requires for you to use your voice a lot or focuses on communication. And going back to the whale message, I feel like the first half of 2023 is really going to ask of you to be very mindful of the way that you communicate information, of your deliverance. Yeah, because I feel like there's a big focus on integrity. How much of what you say or even what you do is there not only to serve you but also to serve others because justice is also about balance. Oh and actually this is the nine of cups. I apologize if I said this was the ten of cups. This is the nine of cups. The nine of cups speaks about wish fulfillment. It's about getting exactly what it is that you wanted but it can also speak about overindulgence. And then the knight of wands being in reverse expresses a very reckless and overly confident energy. This is kind of reminding me of group one because there was a message in group one about 
discerning, being confident with being arrogant, with speaking your truth and forcing your truth. Hmm. Because the overall vibe I'm getting from this spread is of someone who has no interest in hearing the opinions of others or looking from other people's perspective. Like the example that is coming to mind is a court case where revealing the truth isn't the priority. What is the priority is winning the case. Like it's not about justice, it's just about winning. That's the vibe I'm getting. This is a very interesting spread. Because I feel like it can be interpreted in many ways, but it all comes down to the same thing, which is, are you sacrificing justice and the truth for comfort, for satisfaction, for instant gratification? Because with Hotter Than Blue Blazes, I get the feeling that some of you guys might have been ignoring your truth in favor of a message that was more appealing, but in the long run, detrimental to you. So it's like favoring instant gratification over stability. Because the example that came to mind is like someone who is listening to pick card readings and they are intentionally picking the group or picking the reading or the message that validates what they want to hear instead of picking the group that holds the message that they need to hear. So it's kind of ignoring the truth because the truth isn't pretty. Yeah, so like because the other example that is coming to mind is someone who is in a harmful relationship and they keep receiving signs to confirm to them that this is a harmful relationship, that they should let go of this relationship. But instead of paying attention to those signs, they purposefully seek out reasons why to stay and give more importance to that. So it's outright ignoring the truth or sacrificing the truth for something more pleasant, but in the long run, detrimental. And the other thing I'm getting is withholding the truth. With the whale card and the justice card, this could be something like you saying yes when you want to say no in order to keep someone else happy. So it's sort of like people pleasing or maybe even enabling bad habits or tendencies. You know, instead of being honest, raw or even blunt with someone, we sugarcoat things, we beat around the bush, or we even lie because it feels easier to lie than to say the truth. And instead of helping, we enable bad habits or tendencies. And honestly, I'm not quite sure if this is the energy of the first half of 2023 or this is just a message Spirit wanted to share. And they found the perfect opportunity to share it through this reading. Um, because with the tower key term here, I feel like this is talking about an old way of doing things is falling apart. And it's only falling apart because it wasn't working for you or it wasn't leading anywhere good. And so it will depend. For some, it might be you keeping silent wasn't working for you because maybe that was allowing for others to overstep your boundaries. For others, this could be you being dishonest with yourself, you missing the red flags on purpose or dismissing them. Yeah, because with the Hotter Than Blue Blazes card, I feel like some of you have put a veil over your eyes in order to keep yourself from seeing the truth so that you can keep experiencing this illusion of fulfillment and joy and happiness because the nine of cups for whatever reason is reminding me of the seven of cups which speaks about illusions yeah i get this vibe of sweeping something under the rug so with the third eye chakra being here i feel like you're being asked to not ignore your intuition you guys you guys are very psychic you're very very intuitive i especially feel that with the whale showing up in your spread and the justice card you know more than you let on. I feel like you guys can read a room and you can read people, see right through them as soon as you meet them. But for whatever reason, you might tend to ignore the first signs that you pick up on. You might tend to ignore your intuition. There's this feeling of favoring what you want to be true instead of what is, like falling in love with the potential of things instead of what is truly right there in front of you. Which, I mean, there's nothing wrong with that. I don't feel there is, but 
I guess it's important to be honest about it. So it won't lead to disappointment, either on your side or on somebody else's. Yeah, so being honest with others, with yourself, having integrity or intention in your communication, and seeing through unbiased eyes, I feel, will be the lessons of the first half of 2023. But apart from that, I feel like that was a very specific message um, that really wanted to come through. But now that it has been delivered, I feel like now we can get into what the first half of 2023 is really going to be all about. Um, so let's get into that. So for your overarching energy, we have Justice, which is associated with the zodiac sign Libra, which is associated with the seventh house in astrology. And the seventh house is all about partnerships long-term partners, contracts, agreements, as well as disagreements. Um, and with the key term union here and the hotter than blue blazes card, yeah, as mentioned previously, you are going to come into union with members of your soul family or soul tribe, with kindred spirits, people that you see eye to eye with, or people that, I know this is a weird way to put it, but that's how it's coming through, people that are at your level or can meet you where you are at so like you can meet each other halfway because we do have justice here which i don't know why but it's reminding me of the king of swords these are people that you will feel intellectually stimulated by people that you can have deep meaningful conversations with or that can provide you with fresh new perspectives yeah and with the key term reflect i do feel like these are people that will also mirror you in some way i just feel like they are going to be very similar to you in a lot of ways there might be differences but i feel like these differences will provide a lot of insight like i said fresh new perspectives but there are a lot of similarities as well and i feel like that is what is really inspiring this chemistry this passion um because we do have the nine of cups here cups energy which is associated with water which is associated with emotions and intuition they will be emotionally fulfilling relationships or connections but i also feel like they will be mentally stimulating as well like whatever it is that you've been wanting in your connections or relationships that's what you're getting because like i said previously the nine of cups is getting exactly what you wished for exactly what you wished for now the knight of wands in reverse can express hastiness it's a kind of jumping the gun type of energy. So these relationships might develop fairly quickly or you might feel an impulse to jump into these connections or relationships fairly quickly. Um, because I do sense that for those of you who are single and who are looking, or maybe even if you aren't looking, um, there is a possibility for romance in the first half of 2023. You could be meeting someone in the first half of the year that you have instant chemistry with. We do have the key phrase, instant crush. I don't want to go as far as to say that this might be something like instant love or love at first sight, but it might feel that way for some of you guys because I do see this spark happening for some. Like you meet someone that you hit it off with very, very well from the start. And that might inspire you to move things along quickly. Or it might feel like things are moving fairly quickly with this person. We do have patience here. So if that happens to be the case, and if you are uncomfortable with this fast moving pace, like if you want to take things more slow, please speak up, right? <laughs> The first half of the year is about you speaking your truth. If you are uncomfortable with something, speak up about it. Don't keep quiet about it. I feel like with these relationships or connections that are forming or growing deeper in the first half of 2023, it's really important to be honest. Like honesty, sincerity, transparency is super important because I feel like that's what these connections or relationships are here to teach and are here to encourage. So the best way that you can assure that a relationship is built on sturdy, firm foundation is to be honest right from the start. And I feel like that's why we have the key term tower here, which was inspired by the tower card in the tarot. Um, because if there is an honesty, 
if there isn't transparency, if there isn't integrity right from the beginning, the relationship will not be filled on sturdy, firm foundation, which means that eventually you will experience a tower moment in this relationship. And I feel like this is even more so important because that will give you a hint as to whether this is a relationship that is meant to be long term. Because if you speak up, if you are honest, if you share what you are comfortable with and what you're not, if you set your boundaries right from the beginning and the other person in the relationship or people do not respect what you have to say or they dismiss what you have to say or they feel affronted by what you say, that can give you insight as to what this other person values and whether your values align or not. Yeah, because I don't I don't know if this is true for everyone. I'm not a relationship expert and I don't have much experience myself. But what I've seen so far is that typically um, what happens is that when we meet someone that we are attracted to or we want to be liked by, we can tend to hide who we truly are or pretend to be someone that we're not in order to be liked by the other person and when we do that what ends up happening is that over time the relationship doesn't work out um, because we can pretend to be someone we're not forever and when we finally express who we truly are the other person might feel cheated or betrayed because that's not the person that they met that's not the person that they dated that's why it's often encouraged to be yourself you know Um, I know that can be scary at times because the fear of not being liked or not being accepted or being judged is real Um, yet I'm being reminded of the phrase rejection is divine protection because being rejected by someone who is not willing and wanting to accept us for who we are is really a huge favor. I mean, like the rejection part is not something nice to experience, but I mean, in the long run, it serves a greater purpose, a higher good, because it keeps us from being with someone who is not going to appreciate us. Yeah, so so don't feel like you have to pretend in the first half of 2023. Don't feel like you have to try harder or you have to be someone else or be more than you are. It's okay for you to show up as you are. And I assure you, the people, your people will find you. They will find you. That's why we have this Nine of Cups here. That's why we have the message, speak your truth and your voice matters. Yeah, and with patience, I feel like this is a heads up to not rush into anything. We were speaking about how some of you might um, be experiencing something like an instant crush um, or like instant chemistry with someone. And even though that might be very, very exciting, there's just a heads up to be patient, allow the relationship or connection to unfold, to show you what it is, what it is all about. Yeah, and, and even though there might be instant chemistry with someone, It's also helpful to simply get to know the person, you know, because chemistry is one thing. We might have chemistry with someone, but when we get down to it, you know, when we start having a conversation or trying to get intimate, like emotionally, the chemistry won't do much, you know, Um, things might be different there. So take your time to get to know one another, take your time to have conversations with each other, um, to see in what other ways you align. And for those of you who are already in a relationship or are committed to someone, I do feel like communication will be super important in the first half of 2023. You might be having a lot of honest communication with your significant other. And some of these conversations that you will be having might be uncomfortable because they're going to go deep or they're going to tap into things that you or the other person in the relationship have been ignoring. Um, But I feel like these are important conversations to have in order to bring healing or to bring balance back into the relationship. Um, Especially if you feel like you have been experiencing some imbalance in the relationship or connection. Um, But with sensuality, passion, and longing, I do feel like there's going to be a resurgence of passion in your connection. 
a relationship in the first sometime in the first half of 2023 with the nine of cups here i see someone being you know feeling pretty fulfilled pretty happy pretty pleased the nine of cups can also speak about pleasure um so so please take it how it resonates but some of you might be exploring new sides of your relationship well let me put it this way your physical needs sensual or sexual needs will be well met in the first half of the year and because we do have the justice card here i, I do see this being mutual <laughs> um very well reciprocated so you fulfilling your partner's needs and they they fulfilling your needs um pleasuring each other in other words or some of you could be learning each other's love language like what came to mind is a key word. Yeah, some of you might be exploring new things, you know, in in the bedroom and in the intimate department, um, and you might be establishing new boundaries with each other, learning what you don't like, what you do like, and so on. Yeah, and for those of you who are have recently um, got into a relationship, I feel like this is you moving into the next level of commitment and intimacy. And again learning each other's love language and learning your boundaries or your limits and yeah what i'm sensing with the justice card is respect learning how to respect each other in that aspect and it could just be in general knowing what makes the other uncomfortable um knowing how to speak to one another knowing how to communicate well with each other and so on um yeah, so once again, I feel like this is super, super important. I keep repeating it because it keeps coming up. And if it keeps coming up, it's because it's super important. Your voice matters. If there is something that you are not okay with or comfortable with, don't keep quiet about it. Speak up about it. It's okay for you to have your own opinion, to have your own needs, to have your own boundaries. You not being okay with something that your partner is okay with is nothing bad. Please don't keep quiet about something that really upsets you or bothers you or triggers you or is not comfortable for you in order to keep your partner happy. Your needs matter. And I feel like your partner, your partner, if they are truly your equal, they will agree with that, that your needs matter as well. They would want to know what your needs are and what you are okay with and what you're not okay with. They would want to know that in order to provide you the respect that you deserve. So please, please don't do yourself and your partner a disservice by keeping quiet. Your voice matters. The other thing I'm getting with justice and passion is that some of you could be feeling very passionate about a cause, a role even. Um, what I'm getting here is something like activism, supporting a group or supporting a community supporting a cause some of you might be inspired to or called to be a spokesperson of sorts um, or to speak about an injustice um, or help bring justice to something so you could be very active in that if you are already passionate about that yeah but with the knight of wands being here just a heads up to like i'm not one to lecture about this but this is what is coming through like if you're going to promote something or speak about something or educate others about something be very well informed about what you're going to share or what you're going to speak about um and with justice being here you just want to be very careful about putting honest information out there or sharing the truth you know n not misinforming others or misguiding others um, especially if you're sharing about something that isn't necessarily about you um, that pertains to a community or to other people yeah what i'm getting here is like if you're representing somebody else like just be mindful to do justice to whom you are representing like that's the vibe i'm getting Oh, we have a little end here. Yeah, ends make me think of community and working with others. So some of you might be working with a community or with others. Or like I said, representing a group of people or representing a community. Some of you might actually be a spokesperson in the first half of 2023. Or you might be invited to um, give a speech or 
or give you perspective about a situation. And that's why I feel we have the key term offer here. Um, yeah. Oh, and also with offer, do not settle for anything less than. You deserve fairness and equality. With the Nine of Cups being here, you don't have to lower your standards for anybody. And I feel like it can be vice versa as well. Like, be careful as to not give offers that do a disservice to others or are not fair or are imbalanced in some way. Yeah, again, remember this is a general reading, their general messages. I'm just sharing what is coming through or what I'm seeing in the cards. So, like I said with group one, if the shoe doesn't fit, don't force it to fit. Um, yet what I'm seeing here with the Nine of Cups and the Justice card is that like someone might tend to seek their own benefit at the expense of others. And so, yeah, just treat others as you wish others to treat you. Yeah, because with Reflect, I am getting that sense of whatever you put out there, you're going to receive sooner or later. So make sure that you're putting out fairness, justice, equality, honesty, and so on. Um, if that is what you wish to receive. Yeah, and then with the key term decision. What is the key term decision talking about? Two of cups. Mm. Um, with the key term decision, I don't know why I didn't do it on camera. Um, but I decided to pull out a clarifier and the two of cups came up. Because um, I really couldn't pinpoint what this key term decision was all about. But... With Two of Cups being its clarifying card, some of you might be making an important decision in terms to a specific relationship. Um, like I said, some of you might be deciding to partner up with somebody or to move things along with a significant other in the first half of the year. Some of you might be offering commitment to a significant other. Um, or, you know, the Two of Cups is making me think of like, friends to lovers. So, so for some who have been romantically interested in a friend of yours, you could be offering romance to this friend and this friendship could be moving on to a romantic relationship dynamic. Yeah, that's what I'm getting with passion, sensuality, longing, because this could also be something like you had a crush on someone and then you express your feelings to this crush or this crush of yours express their, expresses their feelings and you find out that the feelings are reciprocated they are mutual because we do have the justice card here yeah i'm seeing like there's a dynamic that is evolving or it's changing um and it's because you are deciding to move it along to allow for it to become something more um but for those of you who are already in a committed relationship the two of cups also speaks about mutual respect, love, and equality, which I feel kind of reflects the justice card. So, um, yeah, like I said, this could be something like um, having honest conversations with your significant other or making the decision to be more honest with your significant other, to talk more about your boundaries, uh, to talk more about how you communicate with one another. But overall, I feel like your your relationships, they're evolving, they're deepening, they're growing, they're maturing, they're leveling up or moving on to the next level of commitment or intimacy or depth. Um, that's what I'm sensing. And that's why I feel like we have the Nine of Cups here because it's a very fulfilling energy. Like, And I feel like the more you op openly and honestly communicate in your relationships, the more fulfilling your relationships are going to become. Because I feel like it's opening door for new avenues to explore more in depth your relationships or explore more what your relationships can offer you. There's this energy of exploration. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm seeing with these cards. Um, I do want to point out the numbers. So we have the number 11 with the Justice card. We have the number 9 with the Nine of Cups. And then we have 36. And if we reduce the number 36, we get the number 9. So we do have repeated nine, 9s in your spread. So the number 9 could be of significance. Or the month of September could be of significance as well. I know that's more in the second half of 2023. But I'm just putting it out there in case it's of importance for some of you guys. Yeah, and just 
the obvious, <laughs> which I should have said from the very beginning, the Justice card does speak about legal matters. And we do have the Nine of Cups here. Um, so, yeah, if you have been waiting for news in regards to legal matters, I do feel like you will be receiving good news in the first half of 2023. Um, the Knight of Wands in, in reverse is the one that keeps throwing me off for some reason. <laughs> This this could be expressing something like you're receiving really good news, but you don't want to be overly confident about these good news or you don't want to demonstrate that you're really happy about receiving these good news. Like you don't want to show off. So you're kind of keeping it to yourself or you're holding yourself back from celebrating full on. Um, it could be something like that. Um, but I definitely see you getting good news or getting exactly what you've been asking for, wanting, or wishing for. Yeah, and with patience, I feel like this is just acknowledgement from spirit from spirit that your patience is paying off or you're being... Re I don't want to say you're being rewarded for it, but, but it is this feeling of, okay, I waited all this time and it was worth the wait. That's the vibe I'm getting. Yeah, and for some, this could be speaking about, you know, a significant other or like a friendship. Like I was single for a really long time or I was looking for a kindred spirit for a really long time and I was waiting and waiting. But now that I find you, now that I've come into union with you, I understand that all that wait, it was worth it. It was for a reason because I was waiting for you or all that wait was leading me to you. Yeah, but those are all the messages I am seeing with these cards. So now I'm just going to wrap up this reading by pulling out some extra oracle cards just to get any extra messages, advice, and or guidance from Spirit. Oops. So let's see. Okay, so we have, it's important to get fresh air daily, get outside, look up, move around in it, and breathe deep. And we do have bunnies here, and I'm pointing them out because we are in the year of the rabbit. <laughs> so I feel like this is just more confirmation. And confirmation that partnerships, relationships will be a main theme in the first half of 2023 because we do have two bunnies or two rabbits. Um, because they are black and white, it's reminding me of the yin and yang symbol, feminine and masculine energy. So yeah, it also makes me think of counterparts. Um, but let's see any other messages. And the justice card can also speak about counterparts or like long-term relationships or partners. I think I did mention that, right? Long-term partners. Hmm. Is there any more messages? Yes, there is. Okay. So, ooh, there's a lot. So this one flew out and we have, don't worry about proving yourself or making your mark in this life. There's no ending to who you are. Your energy never ceases to be. And we also have quiet your mind and listen. Talking all the time or asking others for advice drowns out your inner voice. Talk less, feel more. This is interesting because we were just talk going on and on about you speaking up and sharing your voice. Um, but this could be a heads up for those of you who tend to ask others for guidance, or who tend to ignore your own intuition for what others are telling you to do or for what you think you should do pay closer attention to your intuition as mentioned you guys are very psychic and very intuitive you know more than you let on or more than you think you know so trust more in yourself um, and then we also have exciting new opportunities are abound take a chance and change your life and last but not least we have endings are always the start of a new beginning Move forward with courage. Oh, and going back to this quiet your mind and listen, uh, we did speak about you being clairaudient or experiencing clairaudience. Pay close attention to the messages that you hear in your mind. You know, sometimes our mind can be a little prick, <laughs> can be pretty mean, especially if um, there, there's like negative self-thinking and so on. So 
it's important to discern what is what. One way you can discern if it's your intuition or you're just your mind chattering is that intuition is, isn't forceful um, and it doesn't inspire fear. It also doesn't demand to be heard. It's just there. Yeah, I don't know if that's helpful, but yeah. And then this antenna here is reminding me of the radio, of music. Yeah, some of you might even be receiving messages through like podcasts or even through like radio stations, even advertisements. Yeah, um, but yeah, so keep your antenna up pay attention. Yeah, but those are all the messages we have for you guys. I hope you enjoyed this reading. I hope it brought some guidance, some clarity. If it did, then please leave a like or a comment. If you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me, Kim, then please do subscribe. I do offer personal readings. All the information is in my website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below. Thank you so much for watching until the very end and thanks to all of you who took a moment to watch the advertisement since that is a simple way to support me and to support this channel so if you did i truly appreciate it but yeah that is all for now wishing you a wonderful first half of 2023 and until the next moment bye bye hello you guys who chose group three the black obsidian bienvenidos to your reading where we are going to look into the first half of 2023 get the overall energy and or vibe of the first half of the year find out what lessons you will be learning as well as the main themes the first half of the year will focus on um, and for your reading i will be working with both tarot and oracle cards as well as key terms but before we get into these divination tools i would like to share with you what i intuitively picked up on when connecting with the energy of your group because i did pick up on quite a lot but first things first you guys were called to the black obsidian which is known to be a stone that's associated with the root chakra so it helps one to ground the black obsidian is also known as a stone of protection and what i'm getting in specific is that this stone not only protects and or repels dense heavy energy but it also absorbs any existing negative energy in your energy field and i also feel that this is a stone that can help with you feeling more confident or more sure of yourself um yet i mention all of this because one thing that stood out to me was when i was getting ready to connect with your group's energy I visualized myself <laughs> sitting in a waterfall and as I sat there <laughs> I felt myself being cleansed by the water and this stood out to me because this is the first time that I have visualized this and it sort of just came to me and I just went with it because it did feel very cleansing and I felt lighter my energy felt lighter and actually one of the words that came to mind very clearly when connecting with the energy of your group was the word clear so if you feel called to cleanse your energy or do some type of clearing working with water could be a great way to do that maybe drinking water or submerging yourself in a body of water but because waterfall came through in specific for you guys i feel like running water <laughs> running water will be very beneficial for you guys it will help cleanse your energy field i'm not sure about standing under a waterfall but you know standing under a shower might serve just as well so before taking a shower or when taking a shower you can set the intention to have the water cleanse you or cleanse your energy field but apart from water the black obsidian could also be a stone that could assist with cleansing or clearing or if you are a healer whatever form of healing the black obsidian could really help you with your practice because like i said it is known to be a stone that absorbs heavy dense energy um and sometimes as healers we might take on the energy of those who we are assisting especially if you resonate with being an empath so yeah there's just a reminder here to be more mindful of your spiritual energy hygiene i also feel like stones like smooth stones in general like this one for example could serve as protection or to help you ground yeah so a black obsidian a stone 
or water. And I also feel like connecting or working with Mother Gaia, Earth energy could also be of great assistance to you with helping you ground and cleanse. But the other thing I noticed was that I felt a lot of pressure in my head. And that to me indicates that there's a lot going on mentally. It could be that you guys are ruminating about something or there's a lot going on in your life at this moment that causes you to be up in your head. But I also feel like a lot of what you are dealing mentally, thoughts or ideas or worries even, are not yours. Yeah, I feel like you guys tend to pick up on other people's energies, emotions, even worries quite easily. Um, like I said, you might resonate with being an empath or it could be something like you tend to take on other people's problems, be it consciously or unconsciously. Yeah, there's just a heads up to be mindful of that and... If you can, if you remember, when your energy starts feeling heavy or when you catch yourself being up in your head a lot or you're starting to feel down, cleanse your energy. I feel like you will find a lot of relief after cleansing your energy. You will feel a lot lighter. Your headspace will feel a lot clearer and any worries and or anxieties will lessen. Yeah, because... When I felt that pressure in my head, I felt this frustration and the message that came to mind was lighter. I want a lighter energy. And then I felt this desire to look up. <laughs> and, and whenever I feel called to look up, I take that as being hopeful or being optimistic or releasing oneself of something very heavy and unwanted. So if you guys have been dealing with a lot, if it has been very stressful lately, or if you've just been wanting for things to feel lighter, I do feel like the first half of 2023 is going to be that transition of moving from a heavy, dense energy to a lighter energy. It could be your energy or the energy of your environment that's clearing up and becoming lighter. I did see an image in my mind's eye of someone being in ceremony. To be more specific with what I saw, I saw someone being dressed in robes. It kind of reminded me of the scene from the Disney movie Mulan where she's being assisted into her traditional clothing to see the matchmaker. Um, so some of you guys could be participating in a ceremony sometime in the first half of 2023 because we have been speaking about cleansing or clearing your energy. You could also be going to a healer or working with a healer in the first half of 2023. And, you know, it doesn't necessarily just have to be an energy healer. This could also be something like a counselor, a therapist who helps you clear your headspace, unravel your thoughts or unload something off of your chest. Yeah, because I also noticed that my awareness went to my heart space. Um, and so I feel like there's also going to be a lot of cleansing or healing of the heart. Um, and the other thing that I also noticed was that I felt pressure in the center of my forehead where the third eye is said to be. And this could be denoting that you guys are very, very psychic. Or if you have been trying to you know, open your third eye per se, um, you could be achieving that sometime in the first half of 2023. Um, but the other thing I got from the third eye chakra coming into awareness was that I do feel like your focus is going to shift um, sometime in the first half of the year. It could be that you are focusing on something new, on something that is, to me, it feels like a new passion or the word duty and obligation came to mind. I don't know why, but Mulan keeps coming to mind. And then ceremony did come through. So some of you are, are discovering something that you truly value and want to honor and respect. It could be something like upholding a tradition or a custom. And the message get to work just came to mind. And now the lyrics, let's get down to business. Um, came to mind and that's again from the Disney movie Mulan. Um, so maybe the Disney movie Mulan is of significance because it keeps coming through. Yeah, but I feel like you guys are getting serious about something. This could be about your healing, this could be about your spiritual journey, this could be about your studies, education, a responsibility, but it's definitely something that means a lot to you. 
that you feel called to do and want to do. Um, okay, but now I am moving into the cards because I feel I rambled enough. So I will start off by pulling out some tarot cards and I decided to separate the major arcana or arcana cards from the rest of the deck because I felt like the major arcana could really provide us with the overarching energy of the first half of 2023. So once I have pulled out a major arcana card, I am going to work with the rest of the deck to clarify that overarching energy. Okay, so let us see. Group three, what is the, oh, okay. So, mm, we have the Hermit, which is the ninth major arcana of the deck. <laughs> and I looked at the card at the back of the deck and we have the Hanged Man. Very spiritual, introspective cards. Um, okay. Yeah, I feel like a lot of you are focusing on your spiritual journey or on your healing. to clarify this energy and I don't know why I feel like this sense of frustration from some of you guys because it could be that you have been focusing on your spiritual or or healing journey and maybe that's where all that dense and heavy energy was coming from because that's what you have been working to clear out and it's like Ugh, I don't want to do any more heavy inner work I want something lighter I want to experience something lighter um so maybe that's the vibe that some of you guys are in at this moment. So let's clarify this overarching energy. I feel like shuffling it one more time. Okay, so we have the King of Pentacles. Is this annoying for you guys, like the sunlight or the sunbeams? I personally really like having sunlight appear in a reading, but, but I'm not sure how you guys feel about that. Um, okay, but let's put them like this. And now I'm just going to pull out the rest of the cards, which will be oracle cards to get more information. You know, find out what the overall vibe the first half of the year will be. Mm, okay. Ooh. So we have the number eight. A little something I threw together. Oh, okay. Okay, wait, let me read this card first. We have accomplishment, triumph, self-esteem, confidence, talent, accolades, and fame. Ooh, I like this energy. And... Again, I want to share with you the card at the back of the deck. Um, we have Sweet as a Georgia Peach the, with the number 38 and Kindness, Tender Care, Charm, Beauty, Flirtation, and Delicious Experience. Delicious experience that is standing out to me. Okay, the reason why I went, ooh, is because I forgot to mention, since a lot of things were coming through when I was connecting with your energy, um, I tried to write them all down. I put them on a sticky note so I wouldn't forget. But I forgot to write this down, which was that the word hunger came to mind and I actually felt hungry <laughs> um, and then when I saw the cake I was reminded of that hunger my stomach even kind of grumbled a bit and I thought to myself "Ooh, I would really like some cake right now um, so yeah some of you could be experiencing this hunger not exactly for food but you know maybe you could be experiencing some cravings sometime in the first half of 2023 but um, it's more like a hunger for life or a hunger for expansion, growth, a hunger for something more. And for a lot of you, I feel like it's that hunger for that lightness, for something lighter. Maybe something more playful, carefree, simple. Hmm. Okay, but if you see me pause, it's because there's a lot of noise going on and I'm just waiting for the noise to subside. My neighbors are quite loud and they tend to curse a lot, so <laughs> I have to be careful with that. But I take note of what I overhear because sometimes it's 
relevant to the reading I'm doing. And then right now, the kids next door just mentioned something about a wishing thing. I think they're talking about a dandelion. <laughs> Um, so dandelions make me think of innocence, childlike wonder, and it also makes me think of wish fulfillment. And then we do have the key term triumph. Um, and then the cake makes me think of like having your cake and eating it too. So some of you guys could be getting having a wish fulfilled sometime in the first half of 2023. Like a desire of yours is getting fulfilled or more than one desire actually. Because we have this cake with several layers or tiers. Universe, universe might be very careful with you this first half of 2023. Or maybe this is how your guides, um, your higher self, your spirit team source, universe is with you in general. Like they're very, very careful in the sense that they don't want to give you something just because like they are very mindful with the messages that they deliver to you they're very intentional they they want to provide you with the best i know perfection doesn't exactly exist but it's this sense of if it's not right if it's not perfect then we'll wait until it is um because like you deserve the best um maybe they know that you guys are very detail orientated or you're very you're very intentional yourselves like you seek the meaning behind everything and maybe you tend to pick things apart like look very closely at things um take note of everything and so since they know that about you that's why they're very very careful they're very very intentional with what they offer you what they deliver to you or provide you with um, because they know that you will take note of everything um, and they don't want to misguide you that's the vibe i'm getting like they don't want to misguide you they don't want to give you information that will not be of relevance to you um because they know that like you're not wasteful that's the vibe i'm getting you're not wasteful you take everything into consideration and they know that um so if some things take time to come in it's because universe is being intentional with you they are aware of who you are as a person of your qualities so i feel like that's why um all that to to um explain why i feel like a card is taking time to fall out because i feel like they're they're searching through the deck and they're trying to figure out which is the best message which card offers the best message what we truly want to express to them oh and then look we have a letter in a bottle with your message has been received yeah i was just talking about messages yeah so i did mention how i felt like you guys are very psychic know that the messages you receive that you feel are coming from your guides or even your higher self they are legit messages like your guides don't mess with you they won't misguide you or misdirect you or give you false information they won't sugarcoat things or they won't tell you just what you want to hear. They won't play you like that. So if you are at a point in your journey where you feel like you don't know what's going on or maybe you're starting to second guess your own intuition or how you have been interpreting the signs thus far or maybe even second guessing the universe or your guides i feel like your guides don't want to invalidate your feelings like if you're feeling frustrated like that's okay for them feel what you truly feel yet they want to reassure you that you have not misinterpreted anything like especially your intuition or the signs that you have been seeing and look what's the, at the back of the deck we have compass with divine guidance yeah like they want to reassure you that you are on the right path and that soon you will come to see how you have been on the right path yeah, there, there's this feeling of some things take time to grow, some things take time to manifest, some things take time to come together. But I feel like you're reaching this point or you will be reaching this point sometime in the first half of 2023 where things are starting to come together. Um, but now I'm going to pull out a homemade mini chakra card. There's a lot of noise <laughs> happening. These are hard to shuffle. Shout out to the creator who made them this small. The 
creator being me. Um, okay, so we have the third eye chakra. And now I'm just going to pull out some key terms. Hmm, okay. Hmm. And one more. Just one more, please. Okay. I feel like one more. <laughs> okay, there we go. So we have a rest. We have reflect, makes sense because we have the hermit here. We also have love. We have listen, ascend, ask, and recognition. Mm, I feel like this just double confirms the messages in the a little something through together card. I do feel called to go straight to the King of Pentacles because I feel like this is representing you getting your pentacle, you finding your stability, a sense of security, and possibly even your big break. Um, because with recognition and with accomplishment, triumph, accolades, fame, um, I feel like you guys, the phrase much deserved keeps coming to mind. You guys have been working very, very hard on something or you've been dedicating a lot of your time and energy into something. And I feel like with the Hermit, I'm picking up on a bit of disappointment because it could be that you have been putting your heart and soul into something, your time and energy, but you haven't been receiving much in return. It could be that you haven't received recognition for the work that you do or you haven't found stability in what it is that you do and maybe that has caused you to doubt or wonder whether you are on the right path whether your efforts have been futile or maybe it has even caused you to doubt your own skills or your ability to create stability in your life or to garner recognition or even attention and the hermit, the hermit is very private, very reserved. This is a card of introspection and self-reflection. We do have the key term reflect here. You guys, it almost feels like you've been working very, very hard, but your struggles, your worries, you have kept them to yourself. It's like working in private or working behind the scenes. Like no one really knows how much effort you put into what you do. No one really knows the struggles that you face or the disappointments that you feel, the doubt, the worries, the anxiety, possibly. And some of you might have even at some point felt like you have been going on this journey alone. The hermit is also giving off this feeling of waiting, waiting, waiting for the wheel to turn, waiting for things to get better, or waiting for a breakthrough, waiting for a hint or a sign or change. And if that resonates with you, I do feel called to say that your spirit guides know, they know what you have gone through or what you are going through. They see your struggle. And I'm not sure, I never questioned this, but I'm not sure whether everyone who chose this group believes in spirit guides or has faith in them but i do strongly feel called to say your guides your team your spirit team they know they know it almost feels like they have been suffering with you like maybe suffering with you is not the correct way to phrase it but they empathize with you it's like they have never not once undermined what you have felt or feel or have gone through never and so they ha they understood you, they empathized with you, but they were also witnessing your evolution. And they knew, they knew that you were headed in the right direction. And so I feel like they did their best to provide you with reassurance and provide you with hints, letting you know, like, keep moving forward, keep moving forward. You're growing, you're growing, you're finding that clarity. And it's like they've been cheering you on. Yeah, I feel like that's why we have Ascend here. And with love, I feel like this is expressing the love that your guides, that source, universe, your higher self feels for you. Like, they love you so much. Like, it's this... It's this feeling of unconditional love that a parent has for their child where they understand that their child is their own person and they have to learn their own lessons and they have to find their own strength in order to 
see for themselves the amazing person that they are and what they can do and what they're capable of like that's the feeling i get with love yeah and so i do feel like your guides are really really proud of you they're really really proud of you this might even be your ancestors as well coming through to tell you that they are proud of you and that they see you um and that they have never left your side um, and they are just they are just so eager so eager for you to to get your reward to get your pentacle to get your cake and eat it with the utmost satisfaction of knowing that you deserve it and i'm getting such a smug vibe from this king of pentacles it's like being very proud of their pentacle being very proud of what they have achieved and accomplished so this sense of being proud is not only coming from universe your guides it's also coming from you i see you guys feeling very proud of yourselves like if you have trouble recognizing your efforts or your progress i feel like that's changing sometime in the first half of the year because with the king of pentacles i definitely see you guys giving yourself a pat on the back like really acknowledging how much you've done or how much you've grown or acknowledging your efforts your perseverance your patience your work yeah and with the key term ascend here i do see this leveling up this could be a leveling up in the sense of your financial situation your status your career your position at work this could also be a leveling up in your confidence in your trust in self and trust in the universe and i also feel like ascend is speaking about like a spiritual ascension or even like ascending in your spiritual awareness i am feeling this sense of maturity with the hermit and the king of pentacles like a leveling up in your emotional maturity a leveling up in the way that you perceive yourself and understand your role in in the world or in the great design it's like having more clarity as to how things work out or how things unfold or how things come together um, and there's this sense of relief that comes along with this clarity yeah because that's what i'm getting with rest like i can rest knowing that things are working out or they will be working out at the end i can rest knowing that i am being divinely guided and i feel like that's why we also have listen because i feel like you guys will feel more inclined to listen to your intuition to pay attention to the signs synchronicities that you see to listen to your heart as well and to your inner child I just looked at um, the star in this lantern and it reminded me of the inner child because with the letter in the bottle with your message has been received I was reminded of that dandelion I mentioned how the kids were talking about a wishing flower or they were referring to the dandelion and I feel like this is just a confirmation that universe has been listening to your wishes and to your prayers like they know what you desire especially what your inner child desires and, and has wished for or longed for and they're bringing that to you like your message has been received as a confirmation from your guides from universe that hey we have received your wish and it's on its way to you and with this message a little something i threw together it's i feel like you will be receiving blessings in the first half of 2023 and they might be things that you didn't even expect like they might come as a surprise to you but these blessings they will fulfill a deep hidden desire of yours it's it's like extra little treat from the universe yeah what is coming to mind it's like someone who has gone above and beyond with a gift and then when they you know give their gift they're just like oh it's it's a little something i threw together mm, just for you but it's like they put so much love and attention and affection into preparing this gift like i feel that's the universe coming through for you and again it goes back to that message of the universe your guides being so intentional with you and you know i do feel it's the universe or your guides your spirit team coming through for you guys even your higher self but you know with the king of pentacles being here this could also be someone in your life um who first of all has the utmost respect for you and so much love for you and they are happy seeing you happy if they could give you the world they would this is someone who might be really good with 
making things like baking or arts and crafts it's like this is someone who takes their time their love language might be like gift giving or like words of affirmation is another thing that i'm picking up on or acts of service um this is how they express their love to you and if you feel like you don't have this king of pentacles in your life which by the way this is an earth sign so virgo Capric capricorn or taurus but you know um this king of pentacles doesn't have to be an earth sign it's just the energy that they are exuding which is one of stability someone who is dependable hardworking, mature grounded faithful and quite successful the king of pentacles is known to be a provider so yeah so if you feel like there isn't a king of pentacles yet in your life i feel like this king of pentacles will be entering your life sometime in the first half of 2023 and for some this might be a wish fulfillment of yours maybe some of you have been trying to attract a king of pentacles or you have been trying to call in a partner someone who you feel safe with someone that brings stability into your life and helps you ground and anchors you yeah and with the third eye chakra being here for those who that message of calling in the king of pentacles resonates with you i do feel like you saw this king of pentacles coming i feel like you guys visualized this king of pentacles you manifesting someone feels a bit weird to me personally but i do feel like you attracted them you aligned with their energy yeah and some of you might have even been searching for this king of pentacles or for this partner for some it might even be like a life partner or counterpart and then it's almost like the moment that you stop searching or you kind of hesitate you're thinking about calling quits it's when this king of pentacles comes in because i feel like this king of pentacles was supposed to like it was intended for this king of pentacles to come to you and so it's like the minute that you stop searching is when you allow for this king of pentacles to come through for you because they're very like they're very reliable um they want to provide but again i don't feel like this king of pentacles is someone who suffocates like someone who wants for you to be dependent on them because i feel like this king of pentacles is very independent they have their own goals their own dreams their own ambitions i feel like they're always tr striving for more or wanting to improve uh, wanting to grow better themselves or better their skills or their business like because the king of pentacles could be a business owner um someone who is self-employed someone who has built their own empire yeah i feel like this king of pentacles is someone who's very pleased with themselves like they have accomplished a lot they have done a lot they have reached a lot of their goals they're quite fulfilled in themselves and so it's sort of like this king of pentacles is looking to share what they have created with someone somebody else um it's almost like they're also eager to help you accomplish your dreams and your goals whatever those may be they don't even have to be career based is what i'm getting from the king of pentacles like they're saying they don't even have to be career based like maybe your dream is to feel safe and they want to help with you feeling safe or providing you a safe space like they are there as support and as a friend that's what i'm also getting with the king of pentacles but with the key term ask being here this is reminding me of the phrase ask and you shall receive what you have asked for with a pure intention you are receiving in the first half of 2023 yeah and with the key term rest i feel like you guys have been chugging on and working non-stop this could be working on your career on your goals like this could be doing the inner work it's like you just you've been going and going maybe the pace changes you know sometimes you're going fast sometimes you're walking slow sometimes you're barely walking but you've been walking nonetheless trudging on i did speak about how some of you might um, like kind of be tired of like the healing journey or doing the inner work and like know that is perfectly fine because we didn't come into this life just to work you know be it work like physical work like work on a career work to achieve goals or, or to do the inner work to do the healing we also came here to live and to experience and to enjoy so i feel like rest is speaking about you taking a rest from all this heavy work whatever that may mean for you personally and enjoy like enjoy take a break and enjoy some of you who have been focusing on work a lot maybe your focus is shifting to 
providing for yourself to catching up on this much needed rest, focusing on what fulfills you, makes you happy, that isn't work related. Um, for those of you who have been doing the inner work, doing a lot of healing, this could be taking a rest from that, like enjoying progress that you have made and just enjoying yourself without needing to think about the lessons or what about what something means or how you can improve. It's just, you know, having a good time, being yourself and being with yourself and being in good company. Yeah, with Listen, I'm just getting a lot of like conversations, having deep, meaningful conversations with someone um, or with people that you love, that you feel safe with, having conversation about everything and nothing, just talking hours upon hours about whatever comes to mind. And it's like what I'm getting with the a little something I, I threw together, it's like the conversations are pleasurable. What you are doing is pleasurable to you. It's relaxing. It's there's no effort. There's no needing to try or needing to impress. Um, it just it just is. It feels very, very relaxing. And for some, this King of Pentacles could be someone who is already in your life. It could very much be a significant other, a partner, a friend, a relative, um, possibly even a co-worker that you're going to be spending a lot of time with um, in the first half of 2023. And again, I'm feeling very relaxed. Like this wave of relaxation just washes over me and I feel like this is what this king of pentacles provides for you and you provide for this king of pentacles the safety to be yourselves yeah some of you might be going on a vacation or on a retreat um, with the hermit being here I am getting the sense of something spiritual so the connection that you have with this king of pentacles could be a very could be a spiritual connection or this king of pentacles themselves is very spiritual so they can have conversations with you about spirituality um, or they could really go in depth with you um, if that's something that you enjoy or want um, from a partner be a platonic or romantic but i also feel like this king of pentacles ex is expressing the energy that you will be in sometime in the first half of 2023 like i said i do see you finding stability especially in terms to your finances and you feeling stable in your career or your line of work or profession it's like feeling this sense of belonging like being an acceptance of yourself and understanding recognizing and knowing your value yeah, maybe some of you guys have been downplaying your skills or maybe you kind of been struggling with feeling deserving of something or maybe this even has to do with a title. Like just as an example, let's say you are a musician, but you've always struggled with calling yourself or presenting yourself as a musician because you felt like you, you lacked. Um, and then... It's like in the first half of 2023, you're working through that and you're letting go of those insecurities or that narrative, that idea, and you're owning, you're owning that title. Or it could be something like freeing yourself of a, of a label. Maybe some of you really identify with what it is that you do. So you don't see yourself as anything more than that. So going back to the musician example, um, you've always thought of yourself as a musician and you felt like your worth, your value came from you being a musician and you didn't see your worth outside of that label or identity or work that you did. Um, and then in the first half of 2023, you're kind of freeing yourself from that. You're seeing that you're more than what you do. You're more than what you are good at or skilled at. And that could be you redirecting your focus you know discovering what else you're good at or discovering other aspects of yourselves um what other things define you and so on yeah there's this feeling of expansion of growth but it feels very gentle to me it's like somebody gently awakening to a realization and then taking everything in as it comes yeah and we do have the number eight here, which I do want to point out. I personally associate the number eight with work or practice on bettering a skill. So I definitely feel like in terms to work and finances, I feel like you will see a lot of improvement in the first half of 2023. It's like you're getting a lot of validation and confirmation that all your efforts haven't been in vain. Some of you might even be receiving a prize or like, like recognition of sorts. 
yeah, because I'm seeing, <laughs> I'm looking at this pentacle and it's making me think of like a trophy or an, an award of sorts. Some of you might be reaching a milestone in your career or in your education, your studies. It's like, yeah, I did it. Yeah, and feeling very, very proud of yourselves. It's okay for you to feel proud of yourselves. It doesn't make you arrogant. It doesn't make you pompous <laughs> or vain. No, it's just you recognizing your efforts and your dedication. I do want to mention that this King of Pentacles could also be someone who will be recognizing your work or your talent. This could be someone who is already very advanced in their own field of work, who has reached a level of success or even recognition themselves. And then they are seeing you and recognize that you are someone they, they would like to work with or you are someone they would like to learn from or that you are someone they would just like to meet. Yeah, because with your message has been received, I do feel like this King of Pentacles will be reaching out to you. If you have reached out to someone who you admire or who you've been wanting to work with, who has inspired you in some way, someone that you look up to, um, and you haven't heard back from them and maybe that has been a downer in a way because like hearing back from them will be a wish fulfillment for you you could be hearing back from them sometime in the first half of 2023 I, and i do feel like this is someone that you will have a relationship with whether it be romantic or platonic i do see you forming a long term relationship with this person i just feel like this king of pentacles whoever they are they adore you they truly adore you they they have so much love for you. Um, so for a lot of you, it could start off that way that this is someone who reaches out to you or reaches out back to you, wants to work with you, wants to get to know you. And then this person provides you with a lot of support. Um, and then they can become a close friend of yours. And then it can develop into a romantic relationship or it could just stay a friendship. Yeah, but I just... I feel like the person who's reaching out to you, the person who wants to support you, the person you will have a long-lasting relationship with, they're all speaking about the same person, <laughs> like the King of Pentacles. Um, but I don't know. It's a general reading, so for some of you guys, it could be speaking about like different people. Um, but I do want to read the guidebook message that is associated with this card. So we have letter in a bottle with bottles were used by stranded castaways to send out rescue, please. If you're seeing the letter in a bottle, the universe wants you to know that it has received your message. At times, it can feel like our communication with the universe is one-sided. You may feel like a castaway, helplessly sending messages across the vast unknown, questioning whether your prayers are being answered. It's reminding me of the hermit. Rest assured, the universe has heard every thought and word spoken. Pay attention to your dreams and the signs within your environment because these subtle messages will be your confirmation. Yeah, as I mentioned, I do feel like your guys have been sending you a lot of signs, synchronicities, a lot of messages to confirm to you that you have not been abandoned, that they have heard your prayers, your wishes, that they know what it is that you desire and long for and that they are working 24-7 to bring these desires to you to fulfill these wishes of yours. Like they are working with you because they also know that you have been putting in the work. And yeah, with the hermit being here, I do feel like your intuitive senses will be very heightened. You might have very telling dreams, so pay attention to your dreams. Um, with the third eye chakra being here, some of you might even be receiving visions you might be getting images in your mind's eye about what is to come yeah but i definitely see a lot of signs and synchronicities happening happening for you in the first half of 2023 you could also be feeling very introspective and self-reflective i think i already mentioned that in the first half of 2023 you could feel this nudge to retreat every once in a while and i feel like that is like your higher self or your guides calling you to um connect because they have a message for you but there's a download that you need to upload and integrate yeah and like i said i do feel like there is a spiritual connection with a king of pentacles or significant other so um, you could even be kind of having like telepathic conversations with this king of pentacles like your higher self 
could be communicating with each other. Yeah, and if you are partnered up, I do feel like if you are feeling introspective, if you want time alone, your partner will respect that. And they might even assist for you to have that time alone. So like, let's say if you're a married couple with a family, they will take care of the kids or take care of the house chores so that you can have time to relax, to rest, to meditate, introspect, or just gather yourself or ground. Like this King of Pentacles is super supportive. So supportive. I'm getting such a cozy, safe, stable feeling from them. Um, yeah, but let's see. I feel like I want to say more. It's like this feeling of I, I don't want to I don't want to let you go. Like I love being around you. <laughs> this could be the King of Pentacles coming through. I feel like your guides also love communicating or connecting with you. Um, so if you used to talk to them, be it through prayer or maybe journaling, like one-sided conversations, but you don't do that anymore, anymore. I feel like they miss that. They miss that because they really like connecting with you. They love being around you. They love your energy so much. Um, there's so much love for you, you guys. So much love for you. Like, I feel like some of you guys are like, uh, for me? Why? I, that's that's love like this is genuine unconditional love they they love you for who you are like they're not asking for anything in return they just want for you to be happy and feel safe and feel stable and get exactly what your heart desires um they want what's best for you and not only in the sense of what they think is best for you but actually what is best for you like what they know that your soul longs for craves for and needs yeah Okay, but now I'm just going to pull out some oracle cards to get any final messages, advice, or guidance from Spirit. Ooh, those are too many cards. Okay, so these two wanted to come out. So we have, don't worry about proving yourself or making your mark in this life. There is no ending to who you are. Your energy never ceases to be. Mm-hmm. You are worth more than what you do or you bring to the table. Your value is endless. It's infinite. You can't put a number to it. Please let go of that need to prove yourself. You are already worthy. You have always been worthy. Um, and we also have, if you are uncertain, no, this is okay. Trust the answer will come in due time and you will know exactly what to do. Let me pull out a few more. Any more messages for them? Ooh, okay. And we have, it's possible to work your way out of doubt. Practice focusing on good thoughts, like what can be and what is becoming instead of what is. Okay, and the card at the back of the deck is, what has happened is old news. Nothing is stagnant and everything moves forward. Revel in the knowing that you're always creating new news. Okay? Oh, and I just felt called to share this other message with you guys. It was right under this card. So we have practice the art of allowing, get in touch with your inner being, and activate your own guidance system. This image really stood out to me. These two hands reaching out towards each other. Barely touching, yeah, it's reminding me of a connection, a spiritual connection to higher selves connecting in the astral realm. And then we have a lot of like symbols here. I feel like symbols and synchronicities will be super important or will be dominating your life in the first half of 2023. Okay, the planet Saturn is really calling out to me. If you are having a Saturn return sometime in the first half of 2023, that could be an important or significant time. It could be when this king of pentacles comes in or it could be when you feel the most connected with your higher self or with your guides or with the universe yeah because i also feel like this image is describing you feeling supported by the universe you knowing that when you reach out to the universe the universe is reaching back to you but these are all the messages we have for you guys i hope you enjoyed you enjoyed this reading that it brought some guidance some clarity if it did then please leave a like or a comment if you are new to this channel and you want to stick around for more readings with me kim then please do subscribe i do offer personal readings all the information is in my web website and the link to my website can be found in the description box down below 
Thank you so much for watching until the very end and a huge thank you to all of you who took a moment to watch the ads since that is the simplest way to support me and to support this channel. So if you did, I truly appreciate it. Yes, but that is all for now. Wishing you a wonderful first half of 2023 and until the next moment, bye bye.